In a previous video, we talked about how oppositely charged ions are attracted to each other and held together. These compounds made from these ions are ionic compounds. For instance, solid sodium chloride is composed of sodium ions and chloride ions held together by electrostatic forces. But what about molecules like carbon tetrafluoride? In CF4, neither the carbon nor the fluorines are ions, but the atoms remain tightly held together in these compounds as well. Unlike ionic compounds that are held together by ion-ion attractive interactions, molecular compounds, like CF4, are ones that are held together by covalent bonds. Let's investigate. As we discussed in previous videos, atoms are particularly stable when their valence shells are completely filled. So sodium loses an electron to be Na+, and chlorine gains an electron to be Cl-. But what about carbon? It has four valence electrons in a filled shell would be 8 or 0. What do you predict about carbon? While gaining or losing four electrons would get carbon a full shell, neither of these is going to happen. Carbon is going to form covalent bonds, which means that it is going to share electrons with other atoms in order to get its full shell. Let's take a look at these four fluorine atoms and this carbon atom and the molecule they come together to form, carbon tetrafluoride. But how do they come together? That's a topic for a later video on molecular orbitals. For now, we'll focus on constructing models for these molecules that represent the number of bonding electrons in the molecules. These models are called Lewis structures. The first step is to determine the number of valence electrons we'll be working with. So how many valence electrons does each fluorine have? By looking at the periodic table, we see that fluorine is in group 17, which means that it has seven valence electrons. In CF4, there are four fluorines and one carbon, which means that we have a total of 32 valence electrons. These valence electrons are what we have to work with when drawing our Lewis structure for CF4. We can't make electrons appear out of thin air, and we also can't make them disappear into thin air. Step two is to put the least electronegative atom in the middle of the Lewis structure. Out of the atoms in CF4, which atom will be in the middle? A carbon is the least electronegative atom, so it will be in the middle. This means that all of the fluorines will surround the carbon like this. The next step is to make a single bond between each atom. So we'll put one bond between the carbon and each fluorine. Each bond is comprised of two electrons, so we need to subtract from our total number of electrons available. Because there are four bonds, that means that there are eight electrons all in these bonds, which means that we only have 24 electrons left available for our Lewis structure. We need to put all of these leftover electrons somewhere, which brings us to our next step. Put the leftover electrons on the terminal atoms, atoms at the ends of molecules, as lone electron pairs. There's an additional rule, called the octet rule, that we have to consider at this step. Atoms want a full valence shell, which most of the time means that they need a total of eight valence electrons. So as you add electrons around each atom, keep this rule in mind so that you don't add too many or too few electrons to each atom. Also keep in mind that each bond is made up of two electrons. So as we add the electrons as lone pairs around the fluorines, the number of available electrons goes down. Once we finish adding all of the lone electron pairs, we see that we don't have any more leftover electrons. We could stop here, but it's always a good idea to double check our work. Is the octet rule satisfied on each atom in this molecule? Let's take a look at each of the fluorines. Each fluorine has three lone electron pairs, so six electrons around it, and one bond, so two more electrons, which adds up to eight valence electrons, so the fluorines are satisfied. Carbon doesn't have any lone pairs around it, but it does have four bonds, each of which is made up of two electrons. This adds up to eight valence electrons, and so the carbon atom is also satisfied. In this video, we've introduced a new way of accounting for electrons and molecules, but let's again remind ourselves that this is just an accounting method. Electrons aren't dots or lines, they're waves.